then we will proceed with another very important but also interesting targeted analyze. It's dealing with territorial impact assessment for cross-border cooperation and we have Julia Wenger with us. She is from the Interreg Secretariat, Germany, Netherlands. The floor is yours. Yes, uh, thank you, Peter, and uh, good morning, everyone. So um, I will just uh, shortly um, introduce you to uh, another targeted analysis with uh, a cross-border focus that we uh, have at the moment, and that is still very much ongoing, so I won't be able to show you as much and as yeah, any fancy maps or anything. Um, but I will just give you a short uh, introduction from a stakeholder perspective um, on the aims and the status quo um, of this analysis. Um, so um, let me start by um, showing you the parties involved in this uh, analysis. So we as Interreg Germany Netherlands, we are a lead stakeholder and uh, the other stakeholders as you can see um, are from all over Europe, and they are all in uh, one or another way associated with, uh, with the respective interact programs in, uh, in their regions. And we also have some uh, horizontal parties involved, like the Commission, ABR, ABR and uh, the MOT, uh, who are also uh, are very much involved in, in the whole process and are following up actively on, uh, on what we are doing there. And of course, we have uh, the scientific consortium who is conducting the analysis, uh, led by Uriar, and I see uh, Eric and, uh, and Roland over there uh, in the audience. And of course, Espon is the lead contractor of, of this analysis. So, um, yeah, what, uh, what is uh, DICBC actually about? It's about uh, measuring, assessing the impact that cross-border cooperation actually has on a region. And uh, yeah, by, by cross-border co cooperation, um, we, uh, we particularly mean uh, an interact program, but it can also be uh, another type of, of cooperation that is going on there. So we really aim at arriving at a methodology for accessing this impact in an ex post way. So, Having, having a look at what have we achieved in the region. And we know that there are different methodologies out there already for this topic, but um, yeah, those are not really found to be fit for, for a cross-border uh, perspective. So, um, so, and for the comprehensive analysis that we want to have here. So therefore, the, the main activity of, of this analysis is to develop such a methodology and to also test this in the five interreg CBC regions that are participating in the project, with the aim of then reflecting on what actually works and what doesn't, and uh, yeah, help uh, arriving finally at a methodology that works and that we can also present to other um, regions and programs all over Europe so that they can make use of it. So the most important uh, outcomes in this respect will really be a handbook that provides a guidance on how to conduct this kind of impact assessments and also on how to use the results. And of course, we also look forward to actually um, having some evidence from the case studies on what is going on in our regions and we consider this a very important outcome of the analysis as well. So. Um, a little reminder uh, before we get to the actual status of the analysis of why we are doing this um, from a stakeholder point of view. So we really hope that we uh, can, with, uh, with this analysis, address the need for evidence on impacts that, that there clearly is in our regions. Um, on the one hand, we, uh, we, we really need to, to communicate better on, uh, on the impact that we have on, on what we are achieving to both um, citizens uh, and any other, other parties that are really um, on the ground there and to which we are accountable uh, for because we are using these uh, public funds. And uh, yeah, we also need to communicate to, to create the kind of commitment on the ground. 
and an understanding for, for what we are doing. And we really need those kind of uh, yeah, evidence and the stories behind the evidence in order to do that. And on the other hand, of course, we, we also need um, the kind of evidence on, on impact to have a good basis for the planning of, of the future of Interreg in our regions. So um, by gaining evidence on the kind of impact we have, whether it's kind of intended or unintended impact, and also on the kind of impact that we don't have, we, uh, we can gain a very valuable input um, for the political debates that are to come uh, in the context of uh, programming for the post-2020 period, but also for uh, selecting the actual projects in, in our programs. And of course, uh, other reasons uh, for doing this is also that by cooperating in this project, we, uh, we, can, we have the chance to compare different CBC programs and, uh, and regions with each other, which, which is always a great opportunity for learning from each other. And um, another um, thing that is important in this respect is that we are, of course, aware that the availability or, yeah, more likely, the lack of cross-border data also plays an important role um, when, uh, when addressing such a topic. So we just hope that, uh, that this, uh, this project gives us an impression of, uh, of the most important data needs that we have in our regions so that we kind of have a, a starting point for, for addressing um, cross-border data collection in the future. So, um, yeah, so moving on to the, the actual status uh, of the analysis, it's, uh, it's ongoing. Um, it started in uh, May of this year, and so far the scientific consortium has developed a proposal for the methodology. Um, and this methodology is really, it's, it's a mix of, of elements from existing uh, TII methodologies, but it also has some several uh, unique cross-border uh, features, which are very important to us, obviously. And I don't want to go into too much detail on, on this methodology, also because I'm not, I'm not uh, the kind of expert to do that. Um, but I can tell you that it kind of features um, a basic framework for analysis, which consists of, of the premise that there are three strands of effects that uh, um, cross-border cooperation can have, socioeconomic effects, um, effects uh, on sort of European integration goals, and also effects on what is called cross-border cohesion. And with this in mind, you can, you can proceed to um, choosing the right indicators um, in your program context, and then the methodology contains guidelines for um, data collection, um, both quantitative and qualitative data, with uh, the premise being that quantitative data may be um, the preferred option, but quanti qualitative data is also a good option, and uh, also um, it addresses um, the issue of data gaps, because when you want to conduct an analysis like that, then you need um, data at the right geographical level and also um, data for, for the right timeline that you want to um, assess the impact for. So um, this is addressed in the methodology. And what is also important is that the methodology is describing ways for assessing the net impact of an interact program. So um, the actual impact that, that the program has and not the impact that, that, that is due to other factors that might play a role. So for that, several, yeah, both quantitative and qualitative ways are described. And uh, yeah, so right now we are testing all of this in our five CBC regions among others, my, my own region. And yeah, it's, it's really the, the question, uh, what kind of elements are, are the most useful and, and how can we yeah, really put, put this into one comprehensive methodology that we can work with in the future? Um, because these uh, case studies uh, in, in the regions are, are just starting 
now um, in most of the regions, and yeah, we are not really very advanced yet. I cannot really tell you much about the, the content uh, on which we are working, because the main work so far has kind of been on, on the methodology. Um, but what I, what I can do is give you some first impressions um, from yeah, my personal kind of view um, on the work so far. One of the impressions being that whoever you uh, come across and you, whoever you tell about this project and whoever is also kind of involved, I think, from, from the scientific consortium to, um, to the people on the ground that we've actually had in, a, in an expert workshop last week in our region, they, they all very much understand of why, why this is important uh, for us, this topic. But they also uh, very soon see that it is a very complex uh, and ambitious task, and uh, yeah, that it's a really challenging area to work in. Another thing which uh, which we experienced in the case studies uh, so far, at least in my region, but it's probably not very different from the other regions, is that data availability is really. An issue. So, if we would rely on uh, on existing and quantitative data only for for having a look into territorial developments and impact, um, we would not get very far in our analysis. So, uh, a qualitative assessment of uh, of certain cross-border developments by uh, by designated um, experts, and maybe also um, yeah, something like case studies. Uh, might play a big role um, in the methodology in the end, which also involves a lot of practical challenges and also methodological issues. But um, that's something that we need to work on in the future. Um, another interesting discussion that we had uh, among the stakeholders and with the service provider was about about the actual territorial level that should be used for conducting the uh, the impact assessments, and that also stressed that there is kind of a difference between what might be desirable from an analytical point of view and what is the actual yeah reality in our programs and what actually makes sense from a cross-border perspective. Um, yeah, so. Uh, Basically, that's, uh, that's it for now. Um, I'm sorry that I cannot tell you much more at the moment and that we have not uh, any fancy maps or anything yet, but uh, we will do that at, at the next from the seminar for sure. And uh, yeah, now I'm, I'm looking forward to, to proceeding with this project. Thank you.